next to our my political panel joining me live, Liberal MP Tim Wilson and Labor MP Meryl Swanson. Uh, Tim Wilson, I know you're one for personal liberties. It seems like cooperation might be fraying here. Does this feel a bit heavy-handed from New South Wales, locking up Victorians possibly? Well, I, I don't agree with your assessment. I mean, I think politely a lot of these measures uh, are superfluous on the simple basis that the Victorian government has already identified the 10 hot spots. Uh, there will be proper police checks um, and security measures put within those communities to make sure that those who are at risk and pose a risk, of course, therefore, to the rest of the community will be contained. Uh, and I expect that is what is going to happen. So uh, I'm not taking anything away from the New South Wales government. They have a responsibility to protect their citizens. Uh, but I think the Victorian government, at least in how they're managing it now, uh, is likely to take away the risks that they're concerned about. What have you made of the nearly 1,000 people in two particular suburbs with a lot of positive tests refusing to take COVID-19 tests? Oh, well, I think I'm with the rest of the community as well as the Prime Minister, which is it's a basic expectation that people take basic tests to detect the risk, not just to themselves, but also, of course, uh, to the rest of the community. Now, there will be some cases where people may not do it on medical grounds. Um, I don't, those are very much a case-by-case Basis, but I think when it comes to the overall expectation, not just that everybody should have for themselves, but for their community to protect others, as well as themselves, as well as the community at large, is that it's a pretty simple, basic expectation to get tested for a virus. We know it has a very dramatic impact on those who have weak immune systems, uh, the elderly, and of course, the general community as well. Mm. Meryl Swanson, what did you make of what we just heard from New South Wales? Uh, this is obviously the government, uh, the state in which you lived. Did it sound heavy handed, a bit threatening? No, look, I think uh, Tim used the word superfluous, and I would argue that it isn't superfluous. We know that this is an incredibly contagious virus. We know that this has really decimated large chunks of the world and our economy and our health. And I think that, uh, you know, if we were to look back on this in a couple of months, if if it came to New South Wales and said, oh, Gladys Berejiklian and the New South Wales should have done more to contain this. So, look, I think yeah. all along we've erred on the side of caution. And, and look, I just want to extend my sincere and deepest sympathies to Tim and people in Victoria. It must be really crushing to have to go back into lockdown in these areas. I've lived in Victoria myself. It is a fantastic place. We are all in this together. Dan Andrews, and I think Tim has just said he's doing a good job. Uh, the Victorian government has done a good job. Gladys Berejiklian has done a great job, as has Anastasia Palaszczuk. We've worked collectively really well on this, and I think we just have to hold mm. the line when the health experts tell us to. We had only about a week ago the Victorian Premier not wanting to go into any detail about how the outbreaks happen when people wanted to know was this because of private security guards he said i don't want to identify anyone now he's saying this is where the issue was this was the weakness was he a bit slow to be willing to apportion blame it might seem harsh but you've got to do that to be able to figure out what's going wrong fix those errors look i think tom that Apportioning blame is one thing, but I think you do need to have the facts behind you before you apportion that blame. We don't want to scapegoat people. I mean, look, those security guards are there doing a difficult and, and dangerous job, really. So we actually have to just go back to protocols, procedures. We do need to find out where it's broken down so that it can be fixed. But I think that the blame game isn't productive, but I think finding out what's happened and sorting it as Dan Andrews has done, is the critical thing. And we just, mm. you know, need to, we just need, to, it's basic, but we just need to keep doing what we've been told All to right. do. Major defence announcement today and a pivot as well from the Prime Minister, Tim Wilson. Uh, he's talking about a bigger threat in the Indo-Pacific region. Let's be honest, this is all about China, isn't it? Now, it's about making sure that a country like Australia can uh, defend its national sovereignty and its interests uh, in the region, um, but also, and this is a critical point of the conversation, to make sure uh, that other countries mm. uh, can stand up for their own sovereignty as well. The interest of Australia in the Indo-Pacific is not to have one particular dominant partner or the other, it's to make sure that every country can stand up for their own two feet, uh, be sovereign in its own right, 
uh, and for that to be respected. Now, of course, there are emerging situations right. and emerging events that present uh, challenges. We know there's been an increase in the, exp uh, the expansion, the influence uh, of China, um, but uh, we have to make sure we prepare for every scenario. And the reality is we're in a challenging world and one more challenging, frankly, than we thought even five years ago. What country is a major threat to Australia's sovereignty other than China? Well, as I outlined, we have to be prepared for every circumstance. Now, I know you want to go down one rabbit warren, uh, and, of course, I've been a long-standing critic of the Chinese Communist Party. That one uh, be a surprise to anybody. But this is actually about us and about us being able to uh, defend our national sovereignty no matter what circumstance may come past. Five years ago, we weren't talking about the current challenges uh, uh, that people are putting, uh, raising about China, uh, and uh, we don't know what's around the corner. So by making Australia and ensuring Australia can uh, project and protect its sovereignty uh, and helping other countries to be able to do mm. the same, is the best pathway for peace and stability in the region. Meryl Swanson, the PM, pointed out in the late uh, days of the Gillard and then Rudd government, defence spending was at 1.56%, the lowest as a percentage of GDP since the Second World War. Was that a mistake and should it not be repeated by Labor again? Tom, we have said that we are going to keep defence spending at 2% of GDP. And that is something that we are deeply committed to. Just as Tim has said, we, you know, national security and defence really should be beyond partisan politics. It is a very, very serious matter. We know that we've got the specific step up program that is happening through the Australian Defence Force currently. We know that we have terrific engagement with our Pacific neighbours, you know, from all sorts of sporting and, and cultural linkages. And it's really important that we continue to grow uh, those linkages through the Pacific nations. We know that up into Asia, we've got great businesses, business linkages up there. But we also know that China mm. is a really complex neighbour of ours. We know we've got a, a deep and complex relationship with China and we have to be able to navigate that. We have to be able to have clear and really strong leadership. And that's what the Morrison government needs to embrace. And I think that, you know, we've, we've actually really done a good job in saying that this must be beyond politics. And Anthony Albanese has been very strong on that, as has Richard Miles, the Deputy Leader and Defence Minister. And we, we know that there are challenges ahead. We know that there are, you know, difficult negotiations and ne difficult relationships to be navigated particularly with China. But we, um, you know, we're, we're a smart country. It's not beyond us to have a good relationship with China and we need to be constantly working towards that. You know, our trade is pivotal. Tim Wilson, Meryl Swanson, a bit pressed on time today. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Good Thank on you, Tom. Thanks for that.